Hey everybody, happy Wednesday. Today is NTI day 16, April 15th. Before I even start instruction, I'm going to say this video is only intended for those who are in the pink or purple groups. There's no reason if you're not in pink or purple that you should be in um, this video. Nor is there is any reason for you to be doing multiple quizzes or multiple Google Slides or multiple assignments. Okay, You should know what math group you're in. And based on that math group, you have to watch one video and you have to do one assignment. I have friends that have been in and out of other groups and then it's getting everything messed up. Right? So only do, please only do your quiz or only do your assignment and only watch your videos. Okay? So I was looking at yesterday's quiz. Okay, if we click here. Okay, this gives me a summary of how you guys are doing. And I use this assessment to drive how I teach you guys or to drive my instruction as in, what am I gonna teach you guys next? Okay, so based on taking whole numbers to fractions, we had an average of a 2.3 out of five. So we got about half of them right. So let's look at the questions and go over the answers together. Okay, a whole number is, majority of you guys said a whole number is a number without a fraction, which is awesome and that is correct. Okay, a whole number is numbers we work with every day. All right, next question. All right, the question is, three over one is the same thing as, add two friends put three, two friends put one over three, or one third, one friend put three over one, well, it's asking three over one is the same thing as why would we put three over one? And then someone else put one third that had a big space in between it. And this is something that you typed in. So guys, the correct answer here is three, because anytime your numerator is over one, it's the whole number. Okay. So if I said one million, I'd say one million over one is the same thing as one million. I'm 25. If I wanted to find a fraction that was the same as 25, I'd put 25 over 1. Next question. There we go. 5 over 1 is the same thing as, I had four of you guys put 5. That is correct. That's awesome. You know what that tells me? That tells me that those four friends were watching the video, which I really appreciate. Anytime that your numerator is over 1, your whole number is going to be the numerator because all it is is anything divided by one is itself. And remember that fraction bar is a division sign. So five divided by one gets me five. You gotta think about that fraction bar as division. So which of the following is 100 written as a fraction? Like I said, any number written as a fraction, it's gonna be that number over one. Awesome job to those four friends. All right, and my last question is, is one over five the same thing as five over one and how do you know? It is not the same thing as five over one. I know this because if I had, one of my friends used this example and I thought this was a really great example. If I were to do, if I were to have one over five, I'd have one slice of pie, okay? About a normal slice of pie because my pie is broken into fifths. Versus if I had five over one, I had five whole pies. And one of my friends said, well, I went ahead and I cross multiplied, which I love that because that's a reference back to what we've been learning. Okay, so remember, just because they have the same numbers does not mean that they are equivalent. So let's look at that a little bit more. We're going to do a little mini lesson on what we looked at yesterday. Okay. Is... Where's my pen? There it is. Is five over one really the same thing as one over five? Well, like that one friend said, they could cross multiply. So five times five is 25. One times one is one. We know that 25 is much bigger than one. You also can draw this out. Five over one, one over five. Well, five over one, remember one is how is how many parts that it is, how many parts in order to equal the whole, okay? So this would give me five whole pies, and then one fifth, that would be broken into five parts, and I'd get that one little piece. 
So remember, another way to think of this is to think of the fraction bar is like division. It is saying five divided by one gets me five versus one divided by five gets you like it gets you point twenty five. Well, it gets you point twenty. Okay, and point twenty is way less than even one whole. Okay, as we can see right here. So we know that five over one and one over five are not the same. Let's do one more example like that because we're really struggling with that concept. And I have a little trick for us here soon and maybe that'll help with our number sense of fractions. Okay, so what if I said, what is a fraction that is equivalent to the number three? Okay, automatically you should be thinking in your mind, three over one, because three divided by one, any number divided by itself gets itself, okay? Three divided by one gets you three. You could also do six divided by two, or six halves, okay? Because that gets you three. You could do nine thirds. That's the same thing as three wholes. What if I put a fraction out there and ask you what whole number does that equal? Well, let's try it out. What if I said 21 sevenths? So I have the fraction 21 sevenths. It's an improper fraction. My numerator is bigger than my denominator. And I ask, what is that equal to? Okay, what whole number? Remember, that fraction bar is the same thing as division. So really we're saying 21 divided by seven and that gets you three, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna look at something that you guys usually love to learn about. And I think it could help us with our number sense when it comes to fractions, okay? We're gonna give it a try. So we're gonna be talking about fractions and what do they have to do with money, okay? So we're gonna look at the fraction first. One fourth, okay? You say one fourth, what does that have to do with money, Miss Mallory? Well, let's think about this. If you're talking about a whole and you're talking about it in money terms, you would say one whole is a dollar, okay? Then your denominator always tells you how many parts to equal a whole. Okay, there are four of something that equals a whole. What is four of something that equals the same thing as this dollar bill? What does it take four of to equal one dollar? If you said a quarter, you are correct. Okay, it takes four quarters to be equivalent or equal to a dollar. So if I have the number, if I have the fraction one fourth, that's the same thing as one quarter. Quarter. Okay. Let's do another example. What if I had two fourths? Well, there's four quarters in a dollar, and my numerator tells me how many pieces that I have or how many coins that I have. So if you said two quarters is the same thing as two fourths, you're correct. Two fourths is a half, half of a dollar is 50 cents or two quarters. I'm gonna draw that in. You see that? It's really important that you know about this denominator and that the denominator tells you how many slices there are, how many coins it takes to equal a dollar. And the numerator tells you how many you actually have or how many slices of the pie you've eaten. Okay, what about Three-fourths, how would that connect to money? Well, we know two-fourths was two quarters, so we know that three-fourths is three quarters, or 75 cents. Okay, so that would equal three-fourths. I have three out of four quarters that could equal a dollar, that could equal a whole dollar. Let's do another example. We're just gonna keep building off of that. What about four-fourths? 
Well, four fourths, that means that I have four quarters, which means that I have a whole dollar, one whole dollar. So four fourths equals one dollar. See that? That's how we know that four fourths is the same thing as one whole. But what if our denominator changes to one, which is what we've been looking at? Meaning that in order to get a whole, you just need one of something. Well, in order to have one whole dollar and we can only have one type of money, it has to be a dollar. Okay? It has to be the paper kind. Well, if I have four over one, so I have four and it has to be just broken into dollars, that means that I would have four dollars, which means that I would have four holes. See that? Well, what if I had the number five over one? Now remember that denominator tells me I only get one of something to make a whole. So I know that five over one is the same thing as five dollars or the number five, five holes. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's just my little way of teaching you guys about fractions, teaching you guys about number sense to help build on that number sense. Now I'm going to explain what I want you guys to do today. Okay, so first off, on Mondays and Tuesdays, you're going to get a green light on reflex. On Wednesdays and Thursdays, you guys are going to get a finish a lesson on Zern. Okay, after you've done a lesson on Zern, you've watched this video. After you watch this video, you're actually going to go. Well, let's click right in here. What if we go to Google Classroom? Okay, it says purple and pink Google Slides. Okay, I'm gonna open it up. So, so far I've done a Zern lesson for math. I've watched this video for math and I'm learning about what I need to do next. Okay. All right, it says purple, pink, NTI day 16. So your objective, meaning what I want you to get out of this is the relationships between fractions and whole numbers. So we're still looking at that. We've been looking at it since Monday. Okay, your instructions are to find a blank slide and write your name at the top. Then you're gonna give me three examples of a whole number to a fraction. So I even have an example for you right here. So I found a blank slide, I wrote my name at the top, and you'll have a blank chart just like this, okay? You'll go ahead and you'll put in your whole number. Whole numbers are just numbers we work with every day without a fraction. And then you're gonna give me a fraction example of that whole number. Remember, to make it easy, the numerator is the same thing as your whole number, and it's just over one, because we're just talking in terms of one. Just like I have four as the whole number, four over one, I have $4, okay? And then after you've completed your slide, you are done with math for the day. Now remember, you should only be doing purple and pink slides. You shouldn't be on other people's slides, you shouldn't be doing more than you have to. It's just watch this video and just do these Google Slides, okay? I'm hoping money helped you guys with number sense. That's just a little trick to help you. It's not something that you absolutely have to know right now. It's something that you'll actually explore a lot in fourth grade. But that's just something that I thought, hey, that would be a good tool and a good connection for them if they're struggling with number sense and fractions. Tomorrow, you're going to have a quiz over everything fractions, okay? It's gonna be like your end of unit test, okay? So I will assign that to you. There'll be one video that goes over everything fractions. So if I were you, that'd be very, very important that I was watching that and taking notes in order for me to do really well in that test. So you're gonna watch that video. It's gonna go over all things fractions. After you watch the video over all things fractions, you'll take a quiz, okay? So that'll be tomorrow. So it's really important that you are asking me questions or if you're struggling with something you're letting me know it all right i will see you guys tomorrow hope you guys have a happy wednesday